If I asked you the question, what contributes to air pollution in big cities, you probably wouldn't have to think too hard about your answer, right? You'd probably say it's mostly vehicles and factories, right? Well, that used to be correct, but not anymore. This landmark study found that in many industrialized cities, household products and building materials now contribute more to outdoor pollution than vehicles and factories. So what sorts of products are we talking about? Well, air fresheners, cleaners, paints, degreasers, adhesives, coatings, personal care items, and more. Throughout this video, I'm gonna to refer to them as volatile chemical products, or VCPs, so remember that acronym. VCPs release volatile organic compounds, or VOCs, which drift out of our buildings and add to pollution in some concerning ways. Stick around and I'll explain how our buildings became a dominant source of pollution and what exactly you can do to protect your health. I'm Alex and welcome to Healthy Home Guide. I share practical evidence-based protocols to help you improve your indoor air quality no matter your living situation. I got really sick from living in moldy homes and so it's become my purpose to help ensure that what happened to me does not happen to others. For years, the main sources of outdoor pollution were cars, factories, and coal plants. But as stricter regulations and better technologies like three-way catalytic converters reduced emissions from these sources, the relative impact of VOCs from VPCs has grown. So what happens is VCPs emit VOCs indoors, and even though they might seem contained, a significant portion escapes outside. Sometimes you can even smell it happening. Why does it smell like a freshman girl's college dorm? Why does it smell like the, the inside of a Halloween mask? Why does it smell like a mall? When VOCs leak outside, they start as gases you might smell, but then they don't just dissipate harmlessly. They actually undergo chemical reactions with pollutants like nitrogen oxides or oxidants like hydroxyl radicals, or they get broken down by sunlight through a process called photolysis. Through these reactions, VOCs are broken down into new compounds that are less volatile. As these compounds lose their ability to stay in the gas phase, they condense onto existing particles or nucleate to form secondary organic aerosols, or SOA. These are tiny liquid or solid particles suspended in the air. SOA are actually a major component of fine particulate matter, or PM2.5. So what starts as a gas ultimately becomes particles. VOCs also react with nitrogen oxides to form ground level ozone, a harmful gas. Oh, if you're confused about the difference between gases and particles, the way I remember it is this. Gases are much smaller than particles and cannot be captured by filtration as easily as particles. Oh, but can carbon filters capture gases? More on that later. So how bad is VOC pollution in cities these days? Let's take Los Angeles, for example. I mean, can you imagine a place with more hair products and perfumes in the air than LA? This left side of the pie chart is VCPs, and the right side is mobile and upstream sources like oil refineries and chemical manufacturing facilities. Like I said, more than half of VOC emissions now come from VCPs. Even more striking is that VCPs contribute to nearly two-thirds of SOA formation. So what can be done about this? I mean, the first step is recognizing the scale of the problem. VOC emissions from household products have gone unnoticed because regulations have focused on industrial and transportation sources. We need to rethink how we regulate emissions. But what does that even like practically mean? I don't regulate anything. I, don't re I only regulate myself. On this channel, we don't sit around and worry and hope that broad theoretical policy changes might happen sometime in the future. We don't make emotional Twitter posts complaining that regulatory bodies are failing us. Instead, we take action. We deal with what we can do today for our and our loved ones' health. We're exposed to much higher concentrations of VOCs indoors than outdoors, but outdoors we're exposed to higher particle concentrations, which we now know largely consist of broken down VOCs. So what can you do about the outdoor pollution? Well, the obvious solution is if you live in a big city, move outside of it. Air quality is typically much worse in cities. I do understand that moving isn't always feasible for everyone, but that's not a reason for me not to suggest this solution. Not every solution has to work for every person. You can also use good quality air purifiers like I discussed in this video, and you can clean properly like I discussed in this video. No matter how tight your house is, some amount of outdoor air pollution leaks inside. Now, what can you do about the indoor VOC pollution? 
Replace all products with fragrance with unscented versions, including dishwasher detergent, laundry detergent, air fresheners and scent diffusers, cleaning products, trash bags, that's a big one, candles, shampoos, hand soaps, disinfectant sprays, and more. This solution has the added benefit of reducing your contribution to VOC emissions. And by the way, it doesn't matter whether the scent is natural or synthetic. For example, Limonene, a compound found in lemons and citrus scented products, can react with ozone to form formaldehyde indoors. I'm not saying avoid lemons. Products with added limonene are different because they contain much higher concentrations of limonene than you'd encounter from simply cooking with a lemon. My next tip is don't buy products with waterproof coatings, which can contain PFAS or forever chemicals. Next tip, if you're building or remodeling, you can look into using healthier, safer materials. This is a complex subject and I'm gonna do future videos about it, so subscribe if you're interested. And now I'm gonna talk about my top recommendation for reducing VOC exposure. Install a dedicated fresh air intake system for ventilation. If you have concerns about outdoor pollution, it might sound a little counterintuitive, but here's the key. VOC concentrations indoors are typically much higher than outdoors, like sometimes up to a hundred times higher indoors. So introducing outdoor air helps dilute those indoor VOCs. So how do we do that the right way? I use an energy recovery ventilator or ERV. It brings in fresh outdoor air while filtering out particulate pollution. The beauty of an ERV is that it also balances the incoming air's temperature and humidity. So it's not too cold, hot, humid, or dry. Unlike simply opening a window, which can let in uncomfortable or polluted air and provides inconsistent airflow, an ERV ensures a steady, controlled supply of fresh air. After trying the window approach, I can very confidently say an ERV is far healthier, far more comfortable, and more cost-effective in the long run. Check out my video where I demonstrate how to install an ERV yourself for a fraction of the cost of a professional installation. A lot of you guys with odor problems in your homes have been asking me about air purifiers with activated carbon. So odors are VOCs, let's get that out of the way. While carbon can capture some VOCs, its effectiveness is limited. Carbon can quickly become saturated and lose its ability to adsorb VOCs. Yes, adsorb, not absorb. Plus, you need a big, heavy block of carbon to capture a meaningful amount of VOCs. A thin pre-filter won't do much for long, especially in a really smelly environment. This is part of why air purifier companies rarely provide concrete metrics for VOC removal. It's a challenging and imprecise process. Not only that, but carbon can actually re-release gases if it's in a hot space. And also carbon can't remove CO2. If you're dealing with persistent odors that you cannot remove by cleaning or remediating, the best solution is intuitive, fresh air. Don't get me wrong though, I'm not saying activated carbon is like completely useless and you should throw it out right now. I'm saying just don't be manipulated by air purifier marketing into thinking it's nearly as effective as fresh air. But if you feel like carbon removes odors well for you, feel free to keep using it. And there is one scenario where you should probably use a carbon filter. If you're in an area with significant outdoor chemicals like pesticides, you can try adding it to your ERV. You just need to replace it pretty frequently. If fragrances and chemical smells bother you too and you've noticed them when you walk outside, let me know about your experience with this in the comments. Also like this video and subscribe for more content like this. Anyway, thank you for attentively watching.